Hi everyone! Welcome to Basic Editor Training Review. Today we are going to go over Cascade. So I know this is a part of training where most people get that deer in the headlights type of look. So we're going to just dive into what you can expect to find inside um, and hopefully ease that transition into using Cascade a little bit more. So the m most important thing is the URL for Cascade. Sometimes people go to training and then they forget what the actual URL is. Um, you can access this from anywhere. Uh, you don't have to be on campus for it. So just um, remember what this URL is and then it'll take you to a page that looks like this. You're gonna use your CSU Pueblo credentials to log in. So once you're all logged in, you're gonna see a dashboard. That's the first thing, um, which can be a little overwhelming for people that are like, oh my God, I don't know how to get started. There is a video on how to utilize your dashboard. It's not something you really need to do though. It's there if you, uh, the video is there to support you in case you do want to utilize it, but again, not needed. So what you actually will need to do is step one, you're going to click to go to a site on the top left. And then the only option that's going to be there for you is CSU Pueblo main site, which is what you want to click. You're going to land on a page that looks like this. Let me go to Cascade really quick. Let me zoom in my screen. You're going to see something like this. You're going to have this site content on the left and then this, these folders that appear on the right. I'm going to break down this left um, side content area since that's what you really need to pay attention to right now. So the first thing you'll see underneath CSU Pueblo main site are the folders that you have access to. So those are depending on your university unit, whatever you requested access for. Um, so your folders to make your edits, but you're also going to have two additional folders. One of them is the profile one, and that lists every single profile um, that's on the CSU Pueblo website. So not the directory, um, but our actual website with that profile template. Um, and that's there for you so that you can move around contact us pages as you need and update those. Um, before, for those of you that are existing editors, you'd only see um, profiles from people on your team. But now you see all of them just because we realized it's easier access, easier to update. Um, now the last one is the X training folder. So that lists links, um, important links for you and resources such as um, the web uh, link to the video tutorial series to the web style standards and best practices guide. Um, there's a video available for the X training folder and how you can utilize that. There's things that you can copy. There's lots you can do. So I definitely encourage you to explore that. But the, the biggest advantage to it is that you have resources available to you right within Cascade without having to open up any other tab or page. Now, these folders are what we call root folders, everything that falls within CSU Polo main site. So these are the root folders that you have access to. And they are important because they make up the URL, such as everything al along with everything that goes inside of them. So I'm going to explain that a little bit more, but for most of you, any time that you've sent a request to WebDev, we usually ask to send along the URL for the page that you want the edit on. And part of that is because it gives us an idea of where to edit that page within Cascade. So for example, if someone sent this URL saying, oh, we need an edit on this page, then we'd find the root folder Center for Teaching and Learning and then we'd find um, a folder inside faculty development and then edit the index page inside of faculty development. So just pay attention to where that falls um, in the URL. That root folder is what comes right after the csupolo.edu. And then we know that faculty development lives inside of Center for Teaching and Learning. And then another thing to point out is that if you were to just read that URL, would you have an idea of the type of content that you're reviewing on the website? Uh, so most likely, yes, uh, and the answer should be yes. That's what we strive for with the naming conventions for uh, the root folders and everything that falls within. So you do have the option of adding pages. Uh, and the pro tip that we share with that, I guess that's what we're calling it, pro tip, is to pay attention to how you name any content you uh, add inside of root folders. And that's because it does shape um, the URL and it's part of the URL and it really helps with SEO to make sure that you include the entire name which is why we have some really long URLs for the different colleges for example so include every single part of the name 
make sure that the name of of page also matches the title of the of the page, um, which we can go about a little bit more in depth about in other videos. But again, just pay attention to those naming conventions uh, since they do make up the URL. That's enough on URL structure. Now I'm going to talk about how to make edits within Cascade and where to make edits more specifically. So for the example earlier, I said we were going to edit the index page for faculty development. So I'm going to explain what the index page means. Um, so index page is that landing page that you see whenever you go into a folder. Every folder has to have an index page. Um, otherwise, you, people don't have anywhere to land with that URL. So this is the index page for the Center for Teaching and Learning. So if I wanted to edit that main landing site for your CTL, I'd edit that index page. Um, and then how that looks in the URL is uh, you have this one that doesn't list the index.html uh, and then the one that does. Both of them lead to the same place and both of them are recognizing this index page that lives inside of this folder. So now I'm actually going to hop into Cascade to show you um, the next steps of where to make edits. So going to Cascade. We just talked about the site content area on the left here. Now say I wanted to make an edit to, yeah, we'll go to that Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, we see that when I click on this folder, it just drops down. But over here, I just see the repeated list of the root folders I have access to. So I can do two things. I can either click on the folder on the right hand side. And then I see, once I see it on the right hand side, and I read CSU Pueblo Main Site, Center for Teaching and Learning. I know I'm inside the folder. Um, another way of doing that is by clicking on this greater than symbol. But again, you're not inside the folder until you see it on the right hand side. Um, and there's, I guess, a couple of reasons why I recommend always being inside the folder within making edits. One of them is because it's easier to add content. If I, you have this button, let me scooch my screen down. You have this button up here to add content. So you could add a file to your page or navigation link. If you're not inside the folder that you want to add that content to, you can add it to a random place and it could be hard to pinpoint where it is that you added that. So it makes it easier to be inside a folder and then add the content because it's going to automatically put it in that place. Now, going back to the presentation, We're inside the folder now. I want to point out that if you click order, what you're going to see is how the website navigation actually looks. So this is a navigation that people see on csupublo.edu for the CTL. So you have student programs, faculty development, events, and then that's what you see in the folder as well within Cascade. That's only if you click order. And normally, those um, everything will appear by the um, day you created it. So if you create something new, it's going to appear at the very bottom. There is a video available on how you can shift that navigation. It's essentially just drag and drop. Uh, but we just want you to keep in mind that what you see here uh, inside of the navigation when it's ordered makes the navigation on the live site. Now I'm going to talk about the things that you don't see on the live site, which are these folders at the very top. So the index page we talked about, that's the main landing page. So of course, it's not going to be listed on the navigation. But then these underscore doc widget and image folders are mainly to help you store information that's going to be on the entire site. So underscore doc is to store any documents, PDFs um, that you link to from anywhere on CTL. Widgets, it's to store the contact information widgets or any site-specific widgets. <clears throat> and then the underscore image is to store any images regardless of where they fall. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so before, people would just add images to the folder that they were editing, or you'd have images sprinkled in random places, hard to find. So this gives us one central place to look for when it comes to those images. Now, these three folders do not appear in workflow. So if you ever find yourself uploading a document, creating a widget, or uploading an image, and it, it prompts workflow, 
then you're adding it in the wrong place. So again, I recommend doing that same technique of cl clicking that greater than symbol or clicking within the folder on the right hand side to be inside the folder before you add that content so that you make sure you're adding it to the right place. But again, workflow means it's in the wrong location. Now, I'm just going to briefly point out to you when it comes to uploading images and documents to not forget the file type at the end. So the .jpg, PDF, or doc, because sometimes you might be able to see it within the CMS, but on the live site, you get a 404 error or you get some sort of error because you can't actually read the file type. Um, our CMS can't, so make sure you add that at the very end. It's one of the most popular mistakes. Uh, and since it doesn't go to workflow, it's really hard for our team to catch. Um, there is a video on uh, how to upload a file to support you and how to add underscore doc and underscore image uh, files in case you need additional support. But that's it as far as what you need to know. You have site content, you know how to navigate that, you know how to go inside of a folder, and now you have an understanding of what you see on the right-hand side and how the order of it also it affects the navigation on the live website. So thank you for sticking around through that and you got this. <laughs>